Here are some of the most interesting facts about sport fishing and the fishing industry. Number 9. Most Popular Seafood Can you guys guess what's the most popular type of seafood that Americans consume? If your guess is shrimp, then you're right! And you probably understand why Bubba Gump Shrimp Company is so popular. According to the National Fisheries Institute, the US per capita consumption of shrimp in 2015 was 4 pounds per person per year. Salmon came in second at 2.879 pounds per person a year, and canned tuna was third at 2.2 pounds a year. This isn't all that surprising considering it seems that everyone loves to eat shrimp and that salmon is one of the most popular raw fish that's served in sushi. However, crabs were interestingly a distant eighth on the list with cod, tilapia, and pollock all ahead of crabs. What's your favorite seafood dish? Let us know in the comment section and do us a favor and hit that like button for us. Number 8. Variety of Fish Species Worldwide Worldwide there are over 30 thousand fish species. Several hundred of these fish are fished commercially. The primary concerns for fisheries management have been the annual catch of a species and its presumed stock from which the maximum catch for the next season is derived. Basically, they need to figure out how what next year's catch is theoretically supposed to look like. The web of relationships in the ocean, however, is complex. Catching huge volumes of fish changes the entire habitat. It's essentially really hard to predict accurately how commercial fishing affects an ecosystem. However, the idea that entire ecosystems have to be taken into account if fish stocks are to be preserved over the long term is gradually becoming accepted. An improved and more sustainable management of fish stocks in the future is going to require much more extensive investigations than those that have been previously carried out. One topic of interest is how phytoplankton, essentially the basis of life in the ocean, proliferates in particular regions. The amount of composition of zooplankton, stuff which smaller fish species primarily feed, also play an important role. Although these kinds of complex ecosystem investigations have only been carried out for a few species so far, the gain in knowledge is essential in moving forward. Number 7. Environmental Impact for centuries, humans have relied on marine life for sustenance. In recent decades, new technologies have allowed us to fish from the ocean on a massive scale to supply Earth's growing population. Unfortunately, there are many negative environmental consequences to these practices and overfishing has been identified as a primary cause of ecosystem collapse in many aquatic systems. In case you didn't know, one of the chief consequences of industrial fishing is that some species have been overfished to the point of near extinction. Some researchers have claimed that the size of the fishing industry needs to be significantly decreased in order to maintain healthy marine environments around the world. There is research indicating that if the fishing industry continues as is, wild caught seafood will be essentially non-existent by as soon as the year 2048. In addition to removing an increasingly large amount of fish from the ocean, many industrial fishing practices also destroy aquatic habitat, which affects replenishment, and in tropical regions, people sometimes employ blast fishing, which is when fishermen light sticks of dynamite and toss them into the water, making the fish float to the surface for easy capture. Of course, the process is lucrative for fishermen, but it destroys coral reef habitats in the process. Number 6. Devices used in the fishing industry Fishermen use a wide range of gear to land their catch. Every type of device has its own effects on the ocean and only by selecting the right gear for the right job, the fishing industry can help minimize its impact on the environment. Each year, hundreds of millions of fish are hooked on long lines, as long as 75 miles of line. Once hooked, swordfish and yellowfin tuna weighing hundreds of pounds will struggle for hours trying to escape in vain a vast majority of the time. Then they're hauled in, and as they come up to the boat, fishermen sink pickaxes into their sides to pull them aboard. Gill nets are another common form of commercial fishing. These nets, which can be up to a mile long, are left drifting in the sea with the top attached to floats and the bottom weighted down. The net takes advantage of the streamlined body shape of the fish, which swim into them, and then they're caught by the gills or fins unable to back out. Number 5. Populations that have been decimated Swordfish, tuna, and other predatory fish species have plunged to 10% of their abundance before industrialized fishing according to a new global analysis. 
It confirms smaller studies showing that overfishing has decimated certain fish species and it gives a baseline estimate of earlier population numbers that should aid in conservation. Many studies have documented the decline of coastal marine species from sea turtles to rockfish, but pinning down large-scale changes of fish populations in the open ocean has been much more difficult for many reasons. Those oceanic studies have also usually focused on individual species fish beyond recovery, such as Canada's Atlantic cod. Partly because of the difficulty of estimating population size for far-traveling fish, few studies have really looked for global changes. Many studies have relied on estimates of abundance that are actually too low because the estimates were calculated after fishing had already begun to impact abundance. At least five other species of deep water exotic fish are now on the critically endangered list according to Canadian scientists. Researchers say many other species are likely to be similarly endangered and worse, there seems little hope of saving them. My take? Seafood prices are probably only going to go up in the future. Number four biggest recorded fish. We're now taking a slight turn and diving into sport fishing. So, you think that marlin you had mounted on the wall was pretty big, huh? Well, it probably was for its species, but chances are good that it probably wasn't even a third of the size of the heaviest fish in the record books. On April 21st, 1959, Alfred Dean caught a record 2,664 pound great white shark off the coast of his native Australia. Amazingly, he subdued this crazy huge shark, the heaviest record fish ever listed by the International Game Fish Association in only 50 minutes on a 130 pound line. Dean also caught great whites weighing 2,333 pounds and 2,536 pounds. A replica of Dean's biggest catch can be seen at the Bass Pro Shops Outdoor World in Grapevine, Texas. There is, though, another incredible record that isn't quite official. It belongs to Captain Frank Mundus, who was the inspiration for Captain Quint in Jaws. It was a 3,427-pound great white shark caught in 1986 that created quite a stir. Somehow I'm finding research that says this shark didn't qualify for the world record somehow. Can any of you guys shed light on why this didn't qualify? Number 3. Oldest Fishing Record the 22-pound, 4-ounce, world-record largemouth bass caught by George Perry in George's Montgomery Lake was unmatched from June 2, 1932 until Manabu Kurita caught an equally big largemouth on July 2, 2009 in Japan's Lake Biwa. That's a long-standing record by anyone's measure, but one fish record had stood almost twice as long and remains unbroken. A 4-pound, 3-ounce, IGFA, all-tackle record yellow perch caught in New Jersey by Dr. C.C. C. Abbott in May 1865, 150 years ago. When you catch one perch, you usually catch more because this fish travels around in large schools. It is one of the few fish that actually settle to the bottom and remain nearly motionless for a good night's rest. Perch fishing is the most popular form of sports fishing, and while the world record is 4 pounds and 3.5 and ounces caught by Dr. C.C. C. Abbott, the average yellow perch weighs about a pound. The majority of perch are caught on live bait, but fishermen using artificial lures are constantly trying to concoct a spoon, spinner, or fly that will fool these sharp-eyed gamesters, but without any significant results so far. Number 2. Priciest Lure Ever Made Usually, people find it pretty upsetting when they snag a $5 or $10 fishing lure and lose it. But a loss like that is nothing compared to the chance one would take fishing with the million dollar lure from Mac Daddy Fishing Lures. We've heard about diamond encrusted earphones, a million dollar cell phone spangled with glitter, an MP3 player of diamonds and gold, and even a Kodak V570 digital camera festooned with $20,000 worth of shiny rocks. But this one takes the cake. This 12 inch trolling lure designed to catch marlin was crafted with just over three pounds of glimmering gold and platinum and encrusted with 100 carats of diamonds and rubies, 4,753 stones to be exact. Cost? Just as the name says, a cool one million dollars. According to Sports Fishing Magazine, the lure's owner insured it through Lloyd's of London and actually trolled it behind a boat inside the Bay of Cabo San Lucas using a 130-pound test mono and a 500-pound steel leader. Fortunately for him, perhaps, the sparkly bait didn't draw any strikes. 
Number one, fishermen are superstitious. Similar to other people, fishermen had superstitious beliefs and believed certain things caused good or bad luck. For instance, fishermen's superstitions resulted in seafarers claiming a newborn's call would secure its wearer from drowning. There was also a belief that breaking up an old boat would bring bad luck and that those engaged in such a task were sure to come to grief in some way or other. Northern fishermen claimed it was positively dangerous to mention the word horse when at sea because bad luck would follow. Besides those three things, there were many other fishermen superstitions, with one of the most frequently being the fisherman's net. For example, if a fisherman experienced no luck for a period of time, it was suggested the fisherman cast his net on the opposite side of the boat. If a fisherman believed another fisherman was getting his catch, he was told to take a mouthful of water from a running stream under a bridge where the living and the dead pass and sprinkle this over his nets. Another, to improve a fisherman's luck, involved affixing silver pieces, such as small coins, to his net on the first day of the year or hide a small piece of silver somewhere on his boat. The list goes on and on. Here's what's next. The military. Like humans, they can teach each other things and they can learn and adapt new behaviors. One thing they love to do is they like to have fun. And one of their ways of having fun is to terrorize a pufferfish. The BBC documentary Spy in the Pod showed dolphins masterfully handling a toxic pufferfish.